Although I accepted life as the hero, I could not convey the lessons of that life to those who came after. At last, I have eased my regrets. With lofty expectations, a bronze-clad apparition honed a hero with his daunting lost art. His efforts to ease his discontentment bore the fruit of salvation for all of Hyrule. This knight of yore is lauded by many, and his legacy holds a special place in the hearts of fans. For years, it has been widely accepted by the community that this swordsman in life was not just any hero, but arguably the most pivotal character in all of Zelda, the esteemed hero of time himself. However, within the deepest reaches of the most zealous forums, there are a smattering of people who do not subscribe to this theory. In this video, I would like you to entertain the idea that the identity of the hero Shade may not be as cut and dry as you might believe. If you have the courage, follow me with a discerning mind as we explore the reasons that the hero Shade could be someone other than the hero of time. I'm Caleb of Rated N, and this is the Slander of the Hero Shade. Over the years since Twilight Princess's release, there have been a bounty of artworks, fan fictions, and theories, all settled in the idea that the Hero of Time and the Hero Shade are one and the same. Among these works, you will likely see depictions of Link wearing the Shade's armor in a pristine condition, or the hero with a grievous wound to the eye. While these creations are quite good, they do illuminate a core discrepancy between Ocarina of Time's hero and the being we see in Twilight Princess, aesthetics. Let's consider some of the aesthetic differences between these two. One of the first things we notice is that there is a clear height difference between these two characters. While Link appears to be around five foot tall, the shade is substantially taller, around seven feet. Without getting too wrapped up in exact height calculations, suffice it to say that there is a significant height gap between them. We see the hero of time in his adult form during Ocarina's events, a growth spurt occurring that causes adult Link to spring up another two feet is a stretch that is quite unlikely. A common rebuttal to this point is that the Shade may be able to change his size since he's a specter, but this is not something shown in the games. Besides, it would make more sense to match his height to Link's in order to better teach him his techniques. The Shade's armor is certainly a far cry from the green tunic that is so familiar to the hero. Most believe this armor to be from his days as a knight of Hyrule, and that may very well be true. In fact, there are several examples of armor much like the Shades throughout the series. Chain Ball Troopers appear to have strikingly similar design aesthetic to the armor the Shade wears. Inspecting this example from Four Swords Adventures shows that there are several matching features. There are curved horns on the helmet. The color is bronze or gold. The red eyes. As you look through other Hyrule soldiers, you will also see some examples of left-handed knights, just like the Shade. With these facts in mind, it is fair to say that finding a left-handed heroic knight clad in bronze might be a bit more common than at first glance. These things shouldn't be dismissed as traits that only the Hero of Time could fit. Besides, we do see a bronze armor that is fitted for Link called the Magic Armor and it looks quite different from the style that the hero Shade wears. 
You may recall that a certain popular YouTuber once had a video where he revealed a detail about the Shade's weapon, specifically the scabbard. Indeed, it is true that the Hero Shade scabbard does have a strong likeness to the Master Sword's own in Twilight Princess. However, I would like to illuminate some details that may shed more light on this evidence. The existence of Master Sword replicas is nothing new. In fact, the replica swords have existed since the Master Sword's first appearance in A Link to the Past. In a few areas of the Lost Woods, fake Master Swords can be found that briefly fool the hero into thinking that they are the genuine article. Even in the era of Breath of the Wild, Hyrule still attempts to replicate the Master Sword in the form of the Royal Guard Sword. With this trend in mind, let's have a look at the scabbard. Comparing the Shade Scabbard to the actual Master Swords, we can see a notable symbol is missing. Here, the Triforce symbol is very obviously absent from the Shade Scabbard. Along with this, the actual blade itself has only simple similarities with the Blade of Evil's Bane. Another question must be raised. Why wouldn't he have the Scabbard style of Ocarina of Time's Master Sword? if he's supposed to be the hero of that age. As a side note, the Shade also wears his scabbard at his hip, while the Hero of Time, as well as other links, wear theirs on their backs. Could it be that the ghostly knight once wielded one of the replicas of the Master Sword during a time of his own? During the adventure in Twilight Princess, Link will eventually acquire a bow known as the Hero's Bow. This weapon is said to have been left in the mines under the protection of the Gorons by a hero of old. It is this item that fans have claimed supports the theory that the Hero of Time is the Hero's Shade. This bow found in Twilight Princess shares the same name as the Hero of Time's bow during the events of Majora's Mask. However, the well-seasoned theorist will know that these are not the only instances of the Hero's Bow in the series. In the separate adult timeline, the Hero of Winds also obtains the Hero's Bow. Since the Hero of Time only ever uses the Fairy Bow in this timeline, it may mean that this is a different weapon. Advocates of this theory may also point to the similar aesthetics of the Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess bows in order to claim that they are one and the same. We can observe that they both have metallic flanges at the center, as well as wooden protrusions on the inner curve. However, just because there are similarities in design does not mean that they are the same. For example, Link is not the only person with a bow like this in Twilight Princess. Ashe, a Saturnine female member of the Resistance, also carries her own bow. A quick look at the model of it shows us that it is nearly identical to the hero's bow. This logic can also apply to the hero's bow in Wind Waker, where aesthetically identical bows appear in Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, but under a different name. After considering these things, it should be reasonable to conclude that the aesthetics of the Hero of Time and the Shade are vastly different. Not even the passage of time could account for every discrepancy between them. Nevertheless, there is more ground to cover. Now, let's consider some lore points that are at best vague and at worst erroneous and completely contradictory. If you've made it this far into the video, I'd like to thank you for hearing me out on this topic. I know that challenging such a widely accepted and well-loved theory is not exactly going to farm likes, but I believe it is important to- Master, I have an analysis. Statistics indicate that only 2.2% of people who view Rated N's videos are subscribed to the channel. Analysis indicates that a reminder midway through a video increases the number of viewers who subscribe. I recommend that the entire audience subscribe- Fee. It's rude to make people feel pressured into doing things. Try to be more gracious. We will gain subscribers if our content is high quality. Anyway, in the next section, I'd like to share some lore discrepancies and conundrums generated by the idea that the Shade is the hero from Ocarina. 
One small theory believed by some is that Ocarina Link became the Shade after a journey through the Lost Woods gone wrong. They claim that this fate turned him into a Stalfos. This idea comes from a quote by Fado, a Kokiri girl who involves herself in the quest for the Begorn Sword. During this portion of the quest, the carpenter's son sits upon a stump in the Lost Woods. After acquiring a certain item from the potion shop granny, you can attempt to deliver it to him. This time, however, the man is gone, and only Fado can be found in his place. Fado will give the following explanation for the man's absence. B, could you recall the quote? Of course, Master. That guy isn't here anymore, except for the Kukiri. People who come into the forest end up lost. They all become Stalfos. That's why he's not here anymore. Only his saw is left. The issue here is that the Shade isn't a Stalfos at all. He is a spirit. A Stalfos is a monster. While at first glance, the Shade does appear skeletal, a closer examination reveals that he actually still possesses a sort of ghostly flesh on his bones. He more closely resembles a desiccated body, similar to the Draugr from the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, or the mummified Ganondorf in Tears of the Kingdom. We can even compare the Shade's body to the Stalfos we see in Twilight Princess, and we can easily see that there are some pretty obvious differences between the two. One of the strongest arguments used to support the theory that the Hero of Time became the Hero Shade is the presence of the Howling Stones. These stones are scattered across Hyrule, and they create familiar melodies when the wind blows across them. One of the first things we notice about them is that they are branded with the Sheikah Eye symbol. Occam's Razor might suggest that it was the Sheikah who created these stones. The songs associated with these statues are ones that the Hero of Time knew, so it would be easy to conclude that the identity of the Golden Wolf summoned by these songs may actually be the Hero from Ocarina. I would like to point out some things that may weaken this as a point of evidence. I mentioned before that the Howling Stones appear to be the creations of the Sheikah due to their symbol being present upon it. If that is the case, it would cause a problem for them to be linked to the Hero of Time. During the life of Ocarina's hero, there was a fierce war in Hyrule. The Sheikah of that era have all but died out at this time. This is confirmed in several places in Ocarina of Time, such as Sheik's title, Survivor of the Sheikah. The Gossip Stones in the game allude to this as well. Fee, recite the Gossip Stone quote if you would. They say that Princess Zelda's attendant is actually one of the Sheikah, who many thought had died out. This is also affirmed by the old man wandering the plaza of Hyrule Castle Town, who says, with the long peace, no one has seen a Sheikah around here for a long time. With the exception of Impa, who doesn't awaken as a sage in the child timeline, there do not appear to be any Sheikah around to carry out a task such as constructing these stones. It would take generations to build their numbers back up if only a handful remained during this age. It could be more likely that the Sheikah created these stones after the Hero of Time's days were over and their population's numbers had time to increase. The songs of the Howling Stones were ones that were known by the Ocarina Hero. That is a fact. However, it is also a fact that there were three songs that were not associated with the Hero of Time, and not a single one of the songs that he did know were ones known exclusively by this hero. For example, in Majora's Mask, the Happy Mask Salesman, the Poe Collector, and Sharp of the Ikana Composer Brothers each knew of the Song of Healing. The royal family members, Impa, Darunia, and others all know Zelda's lullaby. The Prelude of Light, and the Requiem of Spirit were taught by Sheik, who in turn learned them from somewhere, which means others could learn them from there as well. Each song that was known by the Hero of Time was also known by other people. Because the possibility exists that others could spread those songs, 
We cannot say for certain that it was Ocarina Link that is the one associated with the Howling Stones. Aside from this, the fact that Ocarina Link did not know a few of the songs means that it is possible that another hero might be the one tied to the stones instead. Many believe that Ocarina Link simply learned the unfamiliar songs later in life. While that is one possibility, I'd like you to consider another one as well. Perhaps the hero of time passed down the songs he knew, and a descendant of his was the one to pick up the additional songs. This would cover for the time needed for the Sheikah to recover their numbers and create the Howling Stones, as well as account for the songs. It even preserves an association with the Hero of Time. Another point to consider is one of the songs mentioned earlier, the Song of Healing. According to the Happy Mask Salesman, this song has the power to heal evil magic and troubled spirits. For example, in Majora's Mask, Kamaro the Dancer is full of regret because he had not left his dance to the world. Using the Song of Healing, Link was able to ease his regrets. Doesn't this sound familiar? The hero Shade also tells us of his lingering regrets. He states, Although I accepted life as the hero, I could not convey the lessons of that life to those who came after. At last, I have eased my regrets. I'd like you to consider this. Wouldn't it cause a problem to suggest that the hero of time would allow himself to be filled with regret to the point that he becomes the shade? He has the cure for those regrets at his fingertips in the form of the Song of Healing, so he need not carry such a burden. The idea of the Hero of Time carrying this kind of regret doesn't make much sense in light of this. The Hero Shade appears to us in the form of a golden wolf when he is summoned with the Howling Stones. This Lupin warrior will speak to the hero of Twilight about the spirit of a beast in reference to the connection between the two of them. Other characters such as the Light Spirits or Telma will also remark about how Link is like a beast. These references bring up this question though. What relation does the hero of time have to a wolf? If he and the Shade are supposed to be the same person, why doesn't the Hero of Time have any connections with wolves like the Shade and the Twilight Hero do? The main function of the Hero Shade's presence in Twilight Princess is to teach Link the hidden skills that served him when he was alive. The Shade mentions that some of the skills he teaches are ones that do not leave their bloodline. That is to say, the bloodline of the hero. The moves he imparts are quite impressive, and while they are a great addition to Link's arsenal, it is a fact that none of the techniques taught by the Shade are ones that the Hero of Time used. Even the move closest to something the Hero of Time used, the Great Spin Attack, is still different from the Magic Spin Attack that was used during Ocarina of Time. If the Hero Shade was truly the Hero of Time, it would stand to reason that the moves he would pass down would be ones that were used to defeat the greatest evil known to the world, Ganon. Yet, not a single skill the Shade teaches is one known by Ocarina's hero. For those fans who believe that the Shade died in battle, these would be techniques that failed to save his life. Even with the belief that these moves could have been learned later in the Hero of Time's life, it would still be appropriate to teach the skills that defeated the most powerful opponent he had ever faced. The Shade not emulating the abilities of the Hero of Time can be taken as evidence that he may not be that particular hero. However, there is another strong reason that points to these two characters being separate entities. Throughout the Hidden Skills training, the Shade will repeatedly mention that Link, though destined to be the Hero of Legend, has not yet risen to that station. 
The hero Shade believes that only after mastering the techniques he teaches will Link ascend to hero status. These comments from him are directly contradictory to information about the parameters of the hero that comes from other characters. Twilight Link already possessed proof that he was the hero of legend even before meeting the Shade. Proof that the Shade would have recognized if he was actually the hero of time. Let's consider the mark of the Triforce which Link bears on the back of his hand. In the Wind Waker, the King of Red Lions states that the mark of the Triforce is proof that Link is the hero. He's not the only one to make this statement. The goddess Hylia herself makes it plain that this is a fact. Fee, if you would be so kind. Certainly, Master. Her grace once spoke these words. The mark you see upon the back of your hand is proof that you are the hero of legend, and that within you dwells a sacred power. It is the mark of the Triforce. The other thing that proves that Link is a hero is the legendary Master Sword. In Skyward Sword, A Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time, we are told that the sword itself chooses the hero who wields it. Remarks from the Sage of Light, Raru, illustrate this. He tells us that only one worthy of the title of Hero of Time can pull it from the pedestal of time. The power to fight together with the sages makes you the Hero of Time. The Hero of Time, chosen by the Master Sword. If the Hero Shade was truly Ocarina's hero, he would have instantly recognized that Twilight Link, possessing these two proofs, was undoubtedly the Hero of Legend. He would not need a demonstration of mastery of the hidden skills to prove that Link was the chosen one. After all, the Hero of Time knew none of those techniques and he was recognized. As a possessor of both of these proofs during his life, he would know better than anyone what it means to bear them. In light of all this, it seems to be getting more likely that our armored apparition may have been a hero who had neither the Mark of the Triforce nor the Master Sword during his adventures. It wouldn't be the first time such a thing has occurred in the series. For example, the hero of the Minish Cap did not have either of these relics. In the last section of this video, I'd like to address some issues found in the controversial Hyrule Historia, as well as a few other ideas. In this final section, I'd like to address the main peddler of this theory, the Hyrule Historia. Some of you may already know this, but Rated N does not rely on the Historia, Encyclopedia, or other books when it comes to the lore of these games. Unless otherwise stated, we always try to use information that was sourced directly from the games themselves, such as the cutscenes or Japanese texts. There are too many errors within the books for me to consider them reliable sources of lore, and in this upcoming section, I'll show you a couple of examples of why I feel this way, as well as some thoughts based on deduction. Once again, I appreciate your patience in listening to this video. If you would turn in your copy of the Historia to page 179, you will notice that this page has concept art of the hero shade and a few notes. The main text has an interesting implication. It states that some theorize that the fact that he holds his sword in his left hand indicates that he is actually Link from Ocarina of Time. In essence, the Historia itself is identifying the idea that the shade being the hero of time is simply a fan theory. What's more, they assert that the basis for some people theorizing this is merely because the Shade is a left-handed warrior. As I mentioned in the aesthetic section of the video, there were other soldiers that were left-handed among Hyrule's armies. Therefore, 
being left-handed is flimsy evidence for the Shade being the hero of time. I'd also like to point out the concept art shown on this page of the Historia. A few different designs are shown here. One of them is even a female swordswoman. What this tells us is that the hero Shade was not considered to be Ocarina's link in the minds of the developers. If it was the case, they certainly wouldn't have considered a samurai or female form for the Shade, as these don't line up with the Hero of Time at all. At last, we have arrived to the foundation of people's belief in this theory. Hyrule Historia, page 118, lists the well-known portion of text on which this idea hinges. The Hero of Time is directly stated to be the hero's shade here. It goes on to explain the reason for the spirit's lingering presence. He lamented the fact he was not remembered as a hero. It is this statement that causes an issue. This claim is 100% false according to the hero shade's actual words. Have a listen for yourself. Although I accepted life as the hero, I could not convey the lessons of that life to those who came after. At last, I have eased my regrets. Hopefully by this point in the video, you are becoming familiar with the Shade's actual quote. The Hyrule Historia is incorrect in stating that the Shade regrets not being remembered as a hero. His true regret is that he could not pass down his lessons to future generations. Mistakes like these call the credibility of the books into question. Nevertheless, what if this line from the Historia is just additional lore, not a mistake? Even in that case, the Historia is still wrong. The book claims that the Hero of Time was not remembered as a hero, but the games themselves debunk this assertion. During the intro of Majora's Mask, an essential bit of lore is told to us that debunks the idea that Link was not remembered as a hero. Fee, could you help me out one more time? Of course. I will access the records in my memory. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. A legend held dearly by the royal family that tells of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. As you just heard, the legend of the Hero of Time is one that was held dearly by the royal family. This means that the most important people in the world regarded Link highly. Furthermore, we know that Link, upon arriving in the child timeline, revealed the mark on his hand to the royal family as proof of his status as the hero. This is evidenced by the fact that he possessed both the refitted Kokiri sword and the hero shield at the beginning of Majora's Mask. The secret treasure of the royal family, the Ocarina of Time, has been rightfully placed into his possession once again, tokens of his recognized status as the hero. In addition to this, it is likely that young Link would regain the recognition of the Gorons and the Zoras in the child timeline. Remember, Link arrived at a point in the child timeline where the Gorons were still starving and Princess Ruto was swallowed by Jabu Jabu. Both of these problems would need to be handled again, and this time, Link has the foreknowledge and experience to easily deal with these issues. Addressing these dilemmas would once again earn Link the recognition as hero in the eyes of these peoples. Briefly, I'd like to mention a couple of thoughts that are worth considering on this video's topic. If you have any ideas to add to these, I would love to read over them in the comments section. Like the video and share it on your favorite Discord channel or forum as well. Many fans who believe that the Shade is the hero of time are under the impression that the hero Shade's red eye calls back to a time after Ocarina where Link would become wounded or perish, leading to his transformation into the Shade. Personally, I find it an unreasonable idea that a being as powerful and as skilled as Ocarina's hero would be brought down by an average monster or a common soldier. If you cannot imagine a random monster or person overtaking Ganondorf, it should be out of the realm of possibility to imagine that Ganondorf's superior would fall to such attempts.
The hero of time's life after Majora's Mask is the topic of broad discussion, fanfics, and shipping. A small theory that people associate with the Shade story is that Link marries Hyrule's favorite farm girl, Milan. While there is a gossip stone that mentions that Milan is waiting for her Prince Charming to sweep her off her feet, I think that it is likely that Ocarina's Link decided to go with a different girl instead. Kind of. Romani or Crimea of Termina seem to be more likely candidates for Link to spend his life with. You are likely already aware of all the struggles that the sisters go through during the Terminian adventure. A bit of dialogue spoken by Romani indicates that Link actually agrees to live on Romani Ranch. She states, Why don't you just live at the ranch? I'll lend you Romani's bed. My sister will be happy too. It's a great plan. So, it's decided. It appears to be implied that Link gives his consent to this arrangement. Her offer of her bed raises an eyebrow for many of us, but I would be remiss not to bring up Crimea's view of Link as well. With every good deed, a child takes one step closer to adulthood. I now acknowledge you as being an adult. First Anju and Cafe, now Crimea and Link. Suffice it to say, Link has the approval of the sisters to live on the ranch, as their bodyguard. In comparison, Milan's father Talon suggests to Link that perhaps he would like to marry his daughter. However, he quickly laughs off the notion. At any rate, a life in Termina would mean that Link isn't in Hyrule to become their soldier, but he would still have descendants who would likely be farmers or equestrians. Which do you believe is more likely? Are you Team Milan or Team Romani? Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you were able to enjoy this video despite its deviation from popular theory. I suspect that this will be our most controversial content for a while, so leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet would be a huge help. Andy, Anthony, and I would be grateful for your support, and we hope to continue making videos that would be worthy of your subscription. What are your thoughts on this topic? Make your beliefs known in the comments down below. Hit the notification bell to stay tuned for videos down the road, and remember, as always, keep it rated in.